Well, happy Wednesday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I'm the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma, and I do appreciate you being with me ever so much. I truly do appreciate it. Thank you for all the uh, wonderful comments. Uh, you know, uh, dialogue and discussion is a wonderful thing. And as long as it's done with respect, mutual respect, with dignity, honor, uh, the exchange of ideas, you know, iron sharpens iron. I mean, what, you know, as Proverbs says, you know, the man to present his case the very first time sounds great. But when the second man presents his case, all of a sudden you get to see the other side of it. And sometimes that second position carries the day. So good discussion, good dialogue, good debate is, in fact, a very good thing. So, for those of you who post on my YouTube videos, carry on, but with respect, with dignity, with courtesy. You know, I, I've had some atheists come on there and just throw around slanders, throw around insults. Sorry, not going to put up with it, just not going to do it. So, be warned, if you can't act in a respectful, courteous manner, you're going to disappear. <laughs> yeah, just the way it is. Okay, so, uh, you know, over the last couple of days, I've told you what I want to get to is the comparison between Daniel chapter 12, Matthew chapter 25, 31 and following, and Revelation chapter 11, uh, technically chapter 10, 6 and following, and chapter 11, 15 and following. And the reason for that is very simple. Daniel chapter 12 foretold the following events. Great tribulation, resurrection, verse 2, the time of the end, verse 3, which is the time of the kingdom, verse 3 and verse 4. And it told the time of the abomination of desolation. Oh, and here's where it gets really important. It foretold the time of the rewarding of the prophets. And by the way, this is really, really important. And this is important why? Well, it is important because, as you well know, futurists like to tell us, hey, look, God does not see time like man does. God doesn't communicate in time like man does. After all, one day is with the Lord a thousand years. A thousand years is as a day. So what that is taken to mean is that, well, yeah, um, the Bible does say, yeah, the, the Bible does say the Lord's coming was at hand 2,000 years ago. And it does say the coming of the Lord had drawn near 2,000 years ago. And it does say this generation sh shall not pass until all of these things uh, are fulfilled. Uh, yeah, it does say that, but we got to remember God doesn't talk in time like man does. Now, this is a bit of a digression, but absolutely totally relevant to the entire overall discussion of Matthew chapter 24 and 25. I, I want you to consider this for a moment. How is it, why is it, please ponder this. If men are talking to men, generically speaking, of course, not male and male. But if men are talking with one another and one says to the other, I'll be there shortly, you know, talking to them on the phone, email, whatever it case be, tell you what, uh, I'll be there shortly. Uh, do they mean by that that it might be years and years and years and years away? Now, you know that's not what is meant. You know that. And let me give an illustration. And I'm setting the stage now for Daniel chapter 12, comparing with Matthew 25, comparing with Revelation chapter 11. So please bear with me here as I discuss this issue of time. I've discussed this a lot, but it's critical. Okay, imagine that your house catches fire. 
and you call the fire department and say, my house is on fire, my house is on fire. And the dispatcher says, oh, oh, I'm so very, very sorry. We'll be there shortly. We'll be there quickly. Hang on. We'll be there shortly. And, and you're, you're frantic. Everything that you own is going up in flames. And the fire truck doesn't come. And it doesn't come. And it doesn't come. Your house burned to the ground. You lose everything. Years and years later, let's just say, you know, for illustration purposes, let's just say that 20 years later you've now rebuilt. You're sitting on the porch one day and you hear sirens blaring. Just lots of, lots of sirens. And coming down your road are two or three fire trucks. And man, they slam on their brakes and they pull to a stop in front of your house and all sorts of firemen jump out and say, we're here, we're here, we're here. And you're going, what do you mean you're here? And they say, we're here to put out your fire. And you're going, dudes, my fire was 20 years ago and you told me 20 years ago that you were going to be here shortly and quickly and soon. 20 years ago. And the fire captain says, oh, but you don't understand. When we said quickly, soon, and shortly, we didn't mean imminently. We just mean, all that we meant was, when we finally get around to coming, we're going to drive as fast as we can. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, and I know, that would be nonsensical. It would be ridiculous. So how is it that when men are talking with men and they use time statements that we are supposed to, we are expected to, and we demand to understand time language in the way that time language indicates? Now, had the dispatcher said, well, sir, I'm awfully, awfully sorry, but I, I know your house is on fire, but we can't be there for a long, long time. I, I'm sorry. We, we just can't make it. Would, would you have expected that they be there shortly? Well, no, because they said we can't be there for a long time. So when men communicate with men about events to happen in men's world, we expect words to mean what words men mean. And yet, strangely, paradoxically, when men come to the Word of God and we read hundreds, literally hundreds of Bible statements that events were to happen soon, quickly, shortly, without delay, all of a sudden, men run to 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, one day is with the Lord a thousand years. So in other words, God, who gave man time words, God, who cannot lie, we're supposed to believe that although God used time words of eminence, He didn't mean the events were eminence. Well, let's go to Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12 Daniel was told, verse 4, Shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. Knowledge shall be increased. And uh, in verse 8 and following, Daniel said, I heard, but I did not understand. Then, the, then I said, Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Now remember, he's already been told to seal it up because it's not at hand. <laughs> For he said, Daniel, go your way, for the words are sealed until the time they're closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Now, what does go your way mean? It means, Daniel, uh, here's what it doesn't mean. It doesn't say, now look, Daniel, you're receiving the prophecy today. Why don't you run down to the local 7-Eleven? Take a break, and it'll happen when you get back. No. Go your way means, Daniel, you're going to die. 
So the events that Daniel was told about, about the time of the end, about the resurrection, about the righteous shining forth in the kingdom, about the abomination of desolation, and about the great tribulation, Daniel is emphatically told it was not for his time. Not for his lifetime. Daniel, go your way. It's sealed until the time of the end. Now, mind you, Daniel was not told, now, part of this is going to happen in your lifetime, or shortly after you die, he was told it's for the time of the end. Furthermore, verse 13, go your way until the end, for you will rest, which means you're going to die, and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. What are the days that are appointed? Oh, time, times, and a half time. So here's what we've got. In a prediction of prophecy of the abomination of desolation, the resurrection, the time of the end, the righteous shining forth in the kingdom, the time, times, and a half time, the abomination of desolation, Daniel was told, Daniel, you're going to die. These things will not be fulfilled until the time of the end. At the end of the days, well, again, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of what days? Time, times, and a half time, which is three and a half years. At the end of the days, you will arise and receive your reward. Now, I'm out of time for this morning, but in tomorrow's video, I want you to ponder. I want you to ask yourself the question. What were the constituent elements? What are the constituent elements of Daniel 12? Well, great tribulation, abomination and desolation, the time of the end, the righteous shining forth in the kingdom, the resurrection. That would occur after the end of the time, times of a half time, and Daniel, the prophet, would receive his reward. Now, in Matthew 24, Jesus spoke about the abomination of desolation. He spoke about the great tribulation. He spoke about the coming of the kingdom. Luke chapter 21, 28 to 32. He talked about the abomination of desolation and the great tribulation that would ensue. And he talked about the coming of the Son of Man on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, which is nothing less than the resurrection of Daniel chapter 12, Isaiah 27. And in Revelation chapter 10 and 11, John was given a vision that directly echoed Daniel chapter 12. And in Revelation chapter 11, it is the time of the dead that they should be judged. In other words, it's the resurrection. It's the time of the rewarding of the prophets. Now, does all of Daniel chapter 12 refer to this time of the end? Or does part of it refer to the time of Antiochus Epiphanes and the rest of it apply to the end of time? Which would mean, of course, <laughs> uh, that, none, that none of Daniel chapter 12 would have any application to the first century. None of it would have any application to the fall of Jerusalem and the judgment of Israel. It would all have to do with the time of Antiochus Epiphanes and then the end of time. But is that a tenable position. I suggest it is not. It is not historically tenable. It is not biblically tenable. It is a distortion and perversion of Daniel chapter 12 and of history. And we'll pick that up tomorrow. In the meantime, go to my book. The, uh, I'm sorry. Go to my website, okpreston.com, Bible Prophecy. 
go to my store and order the book, The Resurrection of Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, Fulfilled or Future. In that book, I discuss the question, okay, does Daniel chapter 12 deal with the time of Antiochus Epiphanes? Does Daniel chapter 12 predict the end time resurrection? Can Daniel chapter 12 be chopped up into Antiochus Epiphanes, end of time, maybe a little bit here, a little bit there, there, and what have you, judgment on Israel, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly how do we look at Daniel chapter 12? Go to my website, again, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com. Go to the store, order the book, The Resurrection of Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, Fulfilled or Future. Order the book. Be sure to send me a note that says you off, saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping, save you $5. All right, I'll see you on the flip side.